In the last two videos, we've looked at the notion of differentiability and the derivative of a function. And we want to continue to do that looking at some pretty familiar derivative rules in this video. But before we do that, let's go ahead and recall the definition. So we say that f from a to r, where a is a subset of the real numbers, is differentiable at a point a in a if f prime of a, which is equal to this limit, so the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a exists and is finite. So that's the definition of differentiability. And furthermore, if this limit exists and is finite, we call this object f prime of a the derivative of f at a. So the first thing that I want to do is look at some algebraic properties of the derivative and differentiability. So I've written these as algebraic properties of the derivative, but you could also read them as properties of differentiability. So in other words, f plus g is differentiable if f is differentiable and g is differentiable and so on and so forth. So in other words, this one is maybe the one to pay attention to most and that is f divided by g is differentiable if f is differentiable, g is differentiable and g evaluated at a is not equal to zero. Okay, good. So let's get into this. So we have two functions, f and g. They go from a to the real numbers, and c is just a real number. And then we've got this sum rule. So f plus g prime of a is f prime evaluated at a plus g prime evaluated at a. A constant c times f prime evaluated at a is c times f prime evaluated at a. And then we have the product rule. So that's f times g prime evaluated at a is f prime a g a plus f a g prime a. And then the quotient rule as well. So here what we want to do is we'll prove the product rule. I'll leave this sum rule and the constant multiple rule for you guys to check. They're pretty straightforward given this limit definition of the derivative. And then we will show that this will follow from something called the chain rule, which we'll prove at the end of the video and then have this as a corollary. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. So like I said, I wanna prove this third one, which is this product rule. So I want to look at this limit as x goes to a of f times g. So in other words, the function f times g minus the function f times g evaluated at a over x minus a. So let's notice that that is the limit as x goes to a of f of x, g of x minus f of a, g of a all over x minus a. Now I wanna do the super common math trick, which is adding zero to this, but I wanna add zero to it in a way that this simplifies nicely. So let's see, I've got a couple of choices here. So what I'll do is choose to add um, f of a g of x, and then also subtract it. So maybe I'll put the subtracted one first. So f of a g of x, and then plus, f of a g of x. So let's see what that gives us. So that's going to give me the limit as x is approaching a. I'll take these first two terms, the f of x g of x minus the f of a g of x and factor a g of x out of the right hand side. That's going to leave me with f of x minus f of a times g of x. Great. And then that is all over x minus a. And then furthermore, I have that is going to be plus, well, we have these last two terms, f of a, g of x, and f of a, g of a. I'll go ahead and factor an f of a out of that. So that's gonna give me f of a, and now I have g of x minus g of a, and then all of this is over x minus a. So we've got this big limit. And I went ahead and split it into two fractions because our next step is going to be to split this into a few limits. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can rewrite this first one as the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a 
times the limit as x goes to a of g of x. Great. And so, well, why can we do that? Well, that's because we know both of these limits exist. We're assuming that f is differentiable at a. That's kind of underwritten into this setup right here. So that means we've got this limit exists and this limit exists, but that means their product is equal to the product of the limit. So that's what we get up here. And then we're gonna do something similar over here, but we don't have to factor that into two limits because f of a is just a number. So I'm gonna write that as f of a, and now we have the limit as x goes to a of g of x minus g of a over x minus a. Now I can go ahead and notice that this first thing is just the derivative of f at a. The second one is going to be g of a. And we actually use the fact that differentiability implies continuity here to replace this limit as x goes to a of g of x with just g of a. So we proved that in the last video. And then next we have plus f of a times g prime of a because that's what that limit is. So we've achieved this product rule, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean this up, and then we're gonna look at the chain rule. And after proving the chain rule, we're gonna use that to prove this quotient rule. Okay, okay, so next we're gonna prove the chain rule, which has to do with the derivative of a composition of functions. So let's see how it goes. So we wanna let f be a function from a to the real numbers, g be a function from b to the real numbers, and we want the image of a to be a subset of b. And then we want f composed with g, sorry, that should be g composed with f is defined. Then next, if f is differentiable at a, and g is differentiable at f of a, which is inside of b, then the composition g composed with f is differentiable at a, where g composed with f prime a is equal to g prime f of a times f prime of a. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. So here are two facts that we know, which are our givens, and that is that g prime of f of a exists and is given by the following limit. So this is the limit as y goes to f of a of g of y minus g of f of a over y minus f of a. And so that is from the fact that g is differentiable at f of a. And then using the fact that f is differentiable at a, we can write f prime of a as this limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Great. Now the next thing that we want to do is perform a change of variables here, and this works because f is continuous. So let's go ahead and maybe, I should say continuous at a because it's differentiable at a. So let's maybe write that down. So f is differentiable at a, which implies it's continuous at a, but that tells us that the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a. Great. But now what we can do is compose this limit within our first limit for g prime f of a. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So we have g prime f of a can now be rewritten as the limit as x goes to a of g of f of x minus g of f of a over f of x minus f of a. And what is this? This is just a composition compositional formula for limits, like we saw back when we were working with just limits of functions instead of um, derivatives of functions. Now what we want to do is take this equation right here for f prime and this equation right here for g prime together with algebraic properties of limits that say if both of these limits at exist, then they can be multiplied together into a single limit to give us the following 
fact. So we have g prime f of a times f prime of a is equal to the product of these two limits, which we can smush together into a single limit. Notice that the f of x minus f of a will cancel. And then we're left with g of f of x, g of f of a over x minus a. But let's notice that that limit is exactly equal to g composed with f prime of a which is exactly what we wanted to show for this chain rule. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then we're gonna use this chain rule to prove the quotient rule. So we just got done proving the product rule and the chain rule. Now we're gonna use those together to prove the quotient rule. So let's recall that the quotient rule says that f divided by g, in other words, the quotient of f and g prime of a is equal to f prime a g prime a minus f of a g prime a over g a squared. So we're gonna prove this following lemma first and then apply this lemma along with those two previous rules in order to prove this quotient rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to proving this lemma. And that is that if f of x equals one over x, then f prime of a is equal to minus one over a squared. So this is just the power rule for a negative exponent and that exponent would be negative one in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at f prime of a in this setup. So that's gonna be the limit as x goes to a of f of x. So that's gonna be one over x minus f of a. That's gonna be one over a over x minus a. Now we just have to take that limit. So maybe we can combine this numerator by finding common denominators of the numerator. So the common denominator will be a times x in this case. So that's gonna give me the limit as x goes to a of a minus x over a times x over x minus a. So what did I do? I found a common denominator for each of these. So multiply this by a, multiply that by x, and then I just mashed them together. But now notice that here we have an a minus x, here we have an x minus a. Those can cancel to give us an overall factor of minus one. So let's pull that minus one out of the limit and we have minus the limit as x goes to a of one over a times x, which is clearly one over a squared, which is exactly what we needed. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and apply this lemma along with product rule and chain rule in order to achieve this quotient rule. So now we have f over g prime of a so notice that's gonna be the same thing as f times one over g prime evaluated a. But now by the product rule, that's gonna be f prime of a over g of a plus f of a and then one over g quantity prime of a. But next, we'll apply the chain rule to this term. So notice this one over g prime of a is going to be equal to g prime of a over g of a squared, and then we pick up a minus sign. And that follows from this derivative that we proved in the lemma along with the chain rule that we had before. Okay, great. So now the next thing that we wanna do is find a common denominator for these two terms. So the common denominator is gonna be g evaluated at a squared, so that means we need to build that denominator up. So that allows us to combine these two things. So we have f prime of a, g of a. Now it's gonna be minus f of a, g prime of a, all over g of a squared, which is exactly the familiar quotient rule from like calculus one. Okay, that's a good place to stop.